person gardener rainy morning special edition whole story report on um, what's going on in the rain so um, we had a nice Saturday of light rain where we um, went into our uh, melon and berry boxes and we beefed it up we supplemented with nutrients and some additional soil um, I'm learning a lot about the nitrogen potassium phosphate and other acids and um, bionutrient combinations. That's part of my learning goal this summer. But we had a really successful um, sort of re-nourishing uh, soil augmentation party yesterday. And today it's raining and it's great because now all those um, nutrients and fertilizer that I put in the bed will uh, feed those plants. So happy days when it's raining here at the Cursing Gardener. Now the sad story, the real story, friends, and you know how I feel about creatures and this ongoing theme is that um, the Japanese beetles have found the, um, the cucumbers. So getting in close here on the rainy day story. Um, I have insecticidal soap, a bon neem kind of solution, and I've had to put the, uh, the poor little fellas in here as I pick them off but then you know I feel bad about it and that's awful and I don't I don't think I'm cut out for this whole like circle of life but then there's sort of a hierarchy in the garden thing that's not quite those two paradigms aren't really matching well for me as the cursing gardener this is where I'm really kind of like my heart is confused so I mean is there another way to get rid of these Japanese beetles I'm so sorry about the camera angles here friends but oh, you can't see him but he's in there and and slugs in the beer is another one. Like, can I set them free in the woods or will they just fly right back and eat my cucumbers? That's, how do I do this? Is there <laughs> nonviolent gardening, friends? That's where I'm at, vegan gardening, something of that nature. That's sort of where I'm headed. So if you have that kind of info, if you know the real story on that kind of thing, you know, please send me some information and messages. That's what I need to learn about. And uh, we're just having a gentle time in the catnip with the bees that's more my speed um, killing things scary don't want to do it so hit me up your buddy here rainy day sunday real story uh, this is going to be more of a tender garden gardener moment um, i'll show you here and once again, I'm unsure of angles, but these are the, the boxes I showed you from the previous episode. And what I'd like to draw your attention to today is that um, a couple people have really been uh, super kind to me. I'd like to show you this beautiful basil plant. Well, there's actually two of them. One of them's doing better than the other. But uh, this is from my business manager and she hates basil but she threw a couple basil plants in her box because she knew i loved it she knew how much i love um, pesto and look how good this one's doing that's beautiful i wish you could get a smell of, of the aroma of the basil if you uh, are a basil fan mm, you know exactly what i'm talking about i'm going to walk you over here to uh Another friend of mine who, she had too many uh, tomato plants in her garden at home, and so she moved this group over here, and she said, just if you're hungry or if you, you want tomatoes, just take, take whatever comes from these. So this is really super good news. Um, I'm so thankful for uh, the generosity of people here in the Midwest and I'm sure in the East and everywhere else, uh, what we discover is that we really truly are um, generous, kind, loving people. And so um, even though I curse my air conditioner, I wouldn't be anything without it. Um, what a wonderful place we live in and we're not going to be back to normal for any time soon, but um, uh, we still have the beauty of a look at this garden over here. Gorgeous. Really coming along.
Hey, Carson Gardner. So, a couple of updates. Um, my dog, who is still about to pee, I think. I can't, I can't figure out the camera angle. Who's probably about to pee. Ziggy! Over there. Better. Uh, has killed that azalea bush. He's also managed to kill this azalea bush. Uh, so, yeah. But, here's the thing. I come over to my nice little greens garden and I notice a funky thing happening right over there. What is that? Is that a nest of some sort? Do I poke at it with a stick? I don't really know what to do. If I poke at it with a stick, will I get bit by something? Possibly. It looks like it could be a nest of sorts or something threw up on it. I mean, can you see? Right next to my kale. Right next to the kale that I use in my smoothies. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna poke at it and see what happens. Let me see if I can set this up. Uh. Ew, it's soft. What is that? I don't know what that is. I'm gonna have to water this. I don't know what to do. I'm gonna water it. I'm gonna water it. I'm just gonna water it and see what happens. All right, friends, we're in between some thunder and rain here with another game that you can play while social distancing called Did I Ever Tell You About the Time? So I've reached out to a friend of mine and I kind of initiated Did I Ever Tell You About the Time? So that we're both gonna tell the same story. Um, it's not the same story, but we're both gonna tell our version of the story from our perspective of the same incident that occurred at the same time simultaneously while we were both there, if that makes any sense. Um, so I don't know what Heather said and Heather doesn't know what I'm going to say until I splice the two stories together and play them back for you here at the Cursing Gardener as one of our um, games you can play while social distancing bits. Hi buddy, I'm going to tell a story, you want to hear it? Did I ever tell you about the time that I was with Jen and we went to Food Town, Cold Spring, New York? You don't remember this? I don't remember why we were, um, what we were doing in Cold Spring. Probably either to buy something at the grocery store or to get coffee or to get um, sticky vegan muffins or I just don't know. Did I ever tell you about the time when Heather and I were on a retreat together for songwriting at the Garrison Institute in upstate New York and we both realized that we had not brought a shower cap with us so we um, made a plan to take a ride into town in Cold Spring, New York, to a place that I believe was called Food Town next to a store called Drug World. But anyhow, we wandered around Food Town looking for whatever it was we needed. And I wound up buying something. It could have been gum. That seems the most likely to me. And um, Jen was looking for a drink and, some, and a shower cap to keep her hair dry in the shower as they do. Anyhow. So we walked up and down and up and down and up and down all the aisles and we could not find these shower caps. Um, we get to the store, we look around, we don't see any um, shower caps available. So I go to the courtesy desk and I ask if they might have some in stock. And they say, well, you're in luck because guess what, folks? Uh, we've got these free shower caps that you could have because they're out of the package. Uh, so I finished checking out and there were three people at the customer service desk and um, some of them either came up to us or Jen went up to them to ask if they had shower caps and um, they said yeah we do and so one person went back to find it and they were gone for kind of a long time but eventually um, they came back and they handed Jen a package of three shower caps and Jen asked how much they cost and they said you can have them for free because they're out of the package. Uh, and they gave them to us. So we did not know really what, what the story of why they were out of the package or any of that kind of real story business. We just were like, sweet, it just so happened to be two free shower caps. So we bring them back. Uh, we're excited to, to, you know, get the shower business going. So I went to go take a shower and I tried to put it on my head and immediately the elastic around the edge ripped. I assumed, well, 
this is what happens when you have an enormous head and also you have enormous hair. After we both had the opportunity to shower, uh, we saw one another or texted one another or something. Somehow we interacted. We said, you know, something's up with those shower caps. They're child size. They don't, they don't fit my head. It, you know, they popped off during the shower. I was able to kind of like hold it from one side or the other while I was sort of rinsing different um, sort of halves of my head and body. I but, asked Jen, have you tried the shower caps? And I was like, they're so small. <laughs> he said, I know, they ripped when I was trying to put them in my hair. And they were like, these are like children's shower caps. Yeah. And rumor has it, that is still the shower cap that Jen uses for travel to this very day. But the truth be told, they, they were free and given to us because they happened to be child size uh, shower caps. And that must have been why they were returned in the first place. So the funny part of the story is that I still use the shower cap because I tend to be one of those folks that will just keep using something if it's really busted or broken and not get a new one. That's just how I roll. And um, just uh, yesterday, I received this as a punchline to the story. You get a close up on the real story here. That's, a, that's an adult, shy, adult sized shower cap with polka dots that Heather from Maryland just mailed to me when she figured out that it's been a year that I've been using this child size shower cap, uh, just sort of making the best of it. So Heather from Maryland, thank you. And I can't wait to uh, put our two stories together and see what we both said. Sandy Stones. I'm a geologist and this is my playground. I was just digging in the sand and what's phenomenal about the Long Island coast is that it's actually a glacial anomaly built from large rocks and even the smallest that you find here in the sand. It's a fine day for geology. Come with me. You're going to see here from some of the glacial deposits that have happened over long periods of time back in the ice age is a variety of different sandstone and igneous ow, rock. This is what they call shark rock. It starts a series of islands that moves out into the Long Island coast. Shark rock is actually a fossil of an old shark that got stuck in the middle of the glacial deposits and couldn't move for thousands of years. Another phenomenon are man-made objects, such as this giant piece of glass that I almost just cut my foot on. Right now I'm standing in what is called salt hay in the marsh area of the shoreline of Connecticut. Salt hay was commonly used back in the early settler period to feed the livestock over the course of the winter so that the various nutrients and minerals that were stored inside of the hay helped to feed them and nourish them when there weren't crops growing in the fields. Also, it's a well-known fact that the smaller children of colonial sediment South Carolina. Also a fun fact is that the children with smaller hands in the village came down to pick out the mussels and clams in the mud that you see here so that villagers could eat tasty seafood. Join me next time for another Geology Minute with me, Sandy Stones. Okay, Kirsten Gardner really tender bummed moment. Um, guys, I accidentally cut off a worm's head while I was, um, I feel really bad. Oh, I accidentally cut off a worm's head when um, putting the garden spade into the soil around the watermelon uh, plants to give them a little extra manure that I was kind of puncturing in and this beautiful, Nightcrawler came out without a head, kind of, in a way that makes you feel, I can't tell you guys, you, this is why I'm not good at gardening, guys, I don't, I'm not good at creatures, you know this, we, you know, we've had this kind of episode before, and I'm gonna give you a look, the real story, what I did to the earthworm, I'm not, guys, I'm bummed, can you see him? Hey, guys, can you see him in there, hold on, see if I can get in there. 
hold on, wait. There he is, okay, okay. So he's orienting himself. Oh, he's going head first, but it's not really because his head's gone because it was my accidental shovel. And then he, nope, I think the head's on this side and the part I, yikes, I'm so sorry, dude. I'm sorry, man. I'm just trying to be peaceful. I don't know a lot. Of... I'm sorry about my shovel. Oh.